Working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with we broadcast on participating stations. Working for you. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Working for You, which is brought to you by the St. Kitts Nevis Information Service. My name is Jacqueline Bryan and I am your host for today. And today we have a very interesting show for you, like we always do, because all these government agencies, departments, and units are doing so much for you, the citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis. Today, we are going to be talking a lot about energy, and not just any kind of energy, but clean energy in particular. November has been earmarked as Energy Month in the Caribbean community, which is also referred to as CARICOM. And according to CARICOM, Energy Month is a celebration of the significant strides that have been made within the Caribbean community in our transition to a sustainable energy pathway. The theme being used by CARICOM for the month is clean energy, good governance and regulations, generating growth and resilience. But here in St. Kitts and Nevis, Energy Minister, the Honorable Ian Patches Lybird, said that a sub-theme was being used by the Ministry, which is Clean Energy Benefits You and Me. In his address to mark the start of the month, Minister Lybird said that the government was working assiduously to deliver affordable and reliable energy, along with clean energy alternatives. Here to talk to us today about how the government is doing that and what it means for all of us are the Director of the Energy Unit, Mr. Bertil Brown, Director of the Urban Development Unit, Mr. Ron Body, and Public Relations Officer with the St. Kitts Electricity Company, better known as Skellic, Mr. Gawain Freitz. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we're going to begin by talking about CARICOM Energy Month. I don't know if this is the first one, is it, Mr. Brown? Um, no, it's not the first one. It started in 2011 as an Energy Week. And in 2016, um, it was expanded to a month. Okay, well, I, I'm familiar with Energy Week, but I wasn't sure when it became the week became a month. It, it, it was a week. It was celebrated the second week in November. Okay, well, tell us about Energy Month and why CARICOM thought it was necessary to dedicate an entire month in observance of clean energy. Um, the energy ministers in CARICOM felt that the CARICOM citizens weren't fully aware of um, the issues surrounding energy and the fact that energy plays such a critical role in the economies of um, these countries. And so they decided to start first the Energy Week and expand it to the Energy Month in order to educate the citizens and make them aware of all of these issues. Fantastic. So I'm happy that you chose our program to help make the citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis fully aware of those issues. So what is the significance of the theme, the CARICOM selected theme this year, and the sub-theme that's adopted by the Energy Ministry? Okay, the theme is clean energy, good governance and regulation generating growth and resilience. Um, what we have been pushing throughout the Caribbean is um, clean, renewable energy because we think, we know that there are benefits to gain from, from it, which maybe we may come to later in the show. Um, but what have been found is that countries that put the necessary um, governance in place are the ones who have progressed most with respect to clean energy the laws, the framework, and the regulation. So CARICOM think that if, the, or if these countries put those laws and regulations in place, it would encourage the growth of renewable energy in the system and to lead to a more resilient energy infrastructure. And, and that would be the thinking behind the sub-theme. Yeah. So you well, focus specifically on people. Mm -hmm. Yes. This, the sub-theme points to the fact that um, 
in order to get people to buy into <coughs> to the clean energy, they have to be aware of what the benefits are. So we are outlining the benefits and let them know that they could um, benefit tremendously from adapting clean energy. But before we speak about clean mm -hmm. energy in any great detail, mm -hmm. maybe we can let people know what we are doing locally in observance mm -hmm. of Energy Month. Um, that be Mr. Body. Uh, good afternoon. Again, um, uh, for for this year, what we have decided as a committee is that we would go small because um, it's the first time we are really pushing the Energy Month. So um, our activities, whilst limited, are very important to the um, getting the awareness out on clean energy. And um, some of the events that um, we will be con uh, having this month um, includes, well, first and foremost, um, in everything we do, we must first invoke God's presence. So on Sunday past, we had we went to a church service at Zion Arabia and um, today we are here on Walking For You, that's the second event. On the 16th of November, we want to do a bulb drive and health expo. Um, bulb drive would basically um, in, um, consist of be giving free bulbs to the public. All are invited to come to the parking lot of Water Services Department, and we would have free LED bulb given. I think there, there should be a quota. So no one person can come for a hundred. <laughs> I don't know if the, the quota has been established yet. But um, yes, on the 16th, um, bulb drive at Water Services Department. We would also have a second bulb drive on the 30th at Skellig. Right, similar setup. Um, inviting the entire public to come out and get themselves some LED bulbs for free. On the 24th of November, we will be having a, a health and fun walk, um, just so that um, we all, we're talking about energy. We, we should be full of energy in these times, so um, we'll be doing a walk. The walk would start from Skellig on Central Street and um, up through Greenlands to the F.T. Williams Highway, straight over to um, Kim Collins, Bardock Road, down to the Bear Road, from there by, uh, where the road name? Bear Road? Yeah, Bear Road. <laughs> yeah, the Bear Road. <laughs> the road, the road, the road yeah. by Best Buy. <laughs> we turn down and head to the Bear Road and back to Skellig. Um, breakfast would be on sale after the walk at twenty dollars um, proceeds for the Skellig um, Sports and Social Club. Yeah. Um, also in the month, no 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 dates have been set as yet, but we wanted to do some school visits. We have already selected um, six schools. Obviously we can do all the, the, the primary schools on the island. So we decided we'll do six and next year we do a different six. This year we'll be doing um, Irish Town Primary, Beach Allen Primary, Tucker Clark Primary, Bronte Welch Primary, Dave Bay Primary, and Joshua Obadiah Primary. Um, so those are the events that we have scheduled of for, the, for the month. And hopefully when your next batch you can include some of the private schools because I know of course, our okay. schools are pretty much have a, an element of their science um, curriculum dedicated where they talk about different yeah. types of energy Renewable and stuff like energies that. And stuff yeah. Yes, of course. Well, let's get back <coughs> to the entire notion of clean energy, which is a term that we use pretty often, and it might be one of those terms that we use without thinking twice. But people may not necessarily understand what clean energy is, as opposed to energy in general. So, can you elaborate on that for us a bit? But clean energy uh, come from sources that don't pollute and they also don't give off greenhouse gases. And the greenhouse gases warm up the atmosphere and the pollutants are bad for your health. Um, 
example of clean energy of solar. There is no pollution from solar. There is no greenhouse gases from solar. So mm. it's better for the environment. Yeah, environment and for your health. And it literally is clean, like you clean. were saying. Fantastic. So the minister spoke about several initiatives where clean energy is concerned that the ministry is pursuing. And I, I believe you can speak to those in greater detail for us. Yes. Um, I speak to some that already are either already happened or uh, they have been approved. You have um, a solar farm at the airport, which belongs to SCASPA. You have a solar farm at the ECCB roundabout that belongs to Skellec. Um, you have TDC and Hasfords both having significant amount of solar on their property. You have the convent school that was given permission to have solar. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank have been given permission to put in a significant amount of solar. They haven't started as yet, but they should start soon. And then you have a number of rooftop people with rooftop solar, which we don't know the number. That is something that we have to get a handle on. Um, in terms of larger projects out there that we are working on, the biggest is the, the geothermal. Um, we have um, entered into agreement with a French company, and they have done some surface survey in the area from Lambert's down to Kittishan Hill, and they have identified geothermal in the area. They say it could be as high as um, 36 megawatts of electricity. So we are now negotiating an agreement with them for them to, to develop it. Um, through CDB2, we are also commissioning an environmental study to see how the drilling of geothermal would affect the community and the environment around the area when it is done. But when, for somebody who's not electrical and energy savvy like mm -hmm. myself, when you say 36 megawatts, exact, can you give us an idea of exactly how much energy well, is if, that? If, if you could think of it right now at our peak, saying it's, we consume about 27 megawatts. So that's the entire island? The mm -hmm. entire island. Uh, it varies throughout the day. Yeah, but, but at the peak? At the peak, um, we consume about 26, so the 36 is um, more, than, more we, than enough more than what we consume at the moment oh okay i think that's a pretty good idea <laughs> that's for clearing yes. that up what are the other the other projects we are negotiating a wind project if it's successful it would be in the Bellevue area um we are also negotiating a number of looking at a number of solar projects but is, has wind has wind energy been tried here before not in sink but in nevis okay. there's a wind farm in nevis he has been there for probably close to 10 years now. Probably. Um, we are looking at a number of solar projects. Um, don't know which one we would eventually um, choose. And then we have street lighting, which is an energy efficiency project. Um, sometime next year we will start changing out all of the street lights in St. Kitts and replacing them with a LED. LED lights. Uh, we have the ministry has been cooperating with working with the Bureau of Standard on um, a regional energy efficiency building code. Um, if it if it's adopted and the people build their homes to this standard, they would consume less energy in the home, reduce the electricity bill. There is also a project which we are presently in discussion with with the UAE to build an, another solar farm, a solar farm for us. Um, <coughs> you see, uh, there's a school bus pilot project which is um, being handled by the Department of the Environment. The Ministry of Envi um, Energy is um, involved in it. Um, it's a pilot project. We'll get probably one or two school buses that, um, has a, it's not a solar, it's an um, a electric school bus it runs on electricity, a battery, charge the battery, and we would um, evaluate it, and if it's um, successful, we'll probably expand it. Oh, that's interesting. That yes. should be pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe we have uh, street lights that are powered, solar powered, do we? Um, yeah, there's some um, solar powered street light between Sandy Point and St. Paul's. Mm -hmm. And those have been working out pretty well? Yeah, they're, they're working. Okay, fantastic. So we know that there are several initiatives that, that have 
come on stream already and like you outlined several more that we should be seeing in the future so why are these important and, and how can it benefit consumers and the country at large well the first thing is the source of these energy local so we don't have to import them um, no dictator anywhere could decide that they're not sending us the, the energy um, when there's a war the price don't shoot up don't think storms and so forth can't um, prevent the supply coming in as such they're local and that it makes our energy infrastructure much more secure in that way um, the, the other one is the pollution they don't pollute um, you would know the pollution that comes from vehicles and from the power station and so forth <coughs> it's generally accepted that it's bad for <coughs> your health so if we shift to these renewable clean energy then the population as a whole we think should be healthier um, the other one is the price originally the price of these used to be very high the, and it's coming down now and we're hoping that using them would bring down the price the cost of electricity <coughs> which would be better for both skeleton and for the consumers so there's um, an economic benefit from from that the another one is that a lot of the these um renewable energy sources they're distributed you'll see a solar farm by the roundabout one of the airport the wind farm would be over Bellevue and being distributed it make the grid more more um, resilient um, when you have a centralized power station the power station goes down the whole island is out of power so they're being distributed um, um, make the grid much more secure but say one say two if I'm to be the devil's advocate here mm -hmm. these some of the projects you outlined would be more susceptible to environmental factors for example solar energy when mm -hmm. once we hit that hurricane season we see a lot of overcast skies and stormy weather um, there are times of the year when it's not very windy at all um, the, you might not be able to get the kind of push you need to to generate the kind of energy you need from wind energy and other factors like that so given our location in the Caribbean and all the different environmental factors we have to take into consideration one can ask about reliability okay well what you need is um, a portfolio if the Sun is not shining the wind may be blowing geothermal is very stable it don't depend on the on the weather plus we won't be abandoning the diesel generators um, totally so um, in addition to that most of them will come with storage so on a good day the generator excess is stored for a bad day so that would be taken into account okay fantastic i know there are other projects being worked on by other units and agencies and this is where mr freights and mr body will come in and but just to say that we are also streaming the program live on our facebook page i didn't mention that before but that's very important because when we open up the phone lines you can also ask any questions you have on our Facebook page and we will be sure to relay those to our guests so SKNIS look for us on Facebook and you can listen and watch live there so let's talk about the the other agencies uh, mr. what do you want to go you want to go first and tell us what urban development is doing in that area sure no problem uh, in the area of energy um, urban development has, has one project ongoing at the moment <coughs> and it's um, a street lighting project um, specifically the fourth street area uh, we had noticed that um, uh, the public has noticed that the, the street lights on fourth street being one of the busiest streets on the island was very poor and dull um, urban development is a, a unit that um, <clears throat> addresses challenges and issues within the urban sector. So that's one of the, the areas that um, we um, selected to deal with. Um, currently, oh, let me let me go back. We started the project um, about the end of last month, where we removed 
with the assistance of Skellig and Public Works, we removed all the, the lighting fixtures that were on Fourth Street. Um, currently, what's going on? We are preparing no, new bases for the new fixtures that are coming in to light up Fourth Street. The the whole the whole intention is to intensify the light, the lighting, for safety and security of our people on the Fourth Street, on Fourth Street, and with the addition of what what Bartel spoke of before the um, changing out of the lights throughout the island, throughout the island, um, that would be a great plus in terms of energy and energy efficiency because the cost would would, would be um, cut as well. So what are the timelines you're looking at? For this, the Fourth Street lighting project, um, the light should be commissioned, or the new fixture should be commissioned by the 15th of December. All right, um, the fixtures are on the en route to sink it, and um, they should be installed by the 9th, somewhere around here, and commissioned by the 15th. So in the night time, it's going to look like daytime on Fourth Street now? Yes, that's right. Come December, <laughs> come December 15th? Yes, that's right. So it's not that urban development is necessarily a unit that focuses on energy, but no. you saw this is an area in which you could yeah, we, we deal make with challenges more efficient. Of course. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so is there anything that persons should bear in mind while this work is going on? Of course, um, as you know, Fourth Street is a very busy yes, street. Yes, and, and unfortunately, we have had a couple of incidences so far. Um, I want to appeal again to the public to be cautious and vigilant um, when traversing Fourth Street. There's work going on. Um, there will be some holes at time. Hopefully, well, we are trying to caution the area, the, the areas off. But please. I know of a situation where you know how we walk and text and and thing right now. Somebody tripped over one of the the um, base that was left. Oh dear. Um, so please I be be, be right. cautious. Yes, they, they took a little spill, but they're okay. All right. So appealing to the public to be cautious and, and look around. But have you removed the, all the lights? All the poles are down. Phases? All the poles <coughs> have been removed. Uh, since um, December, yeah, December last year, we had put a temporary um, something temporary in place. We um, through Skellig we put up some spotlights on Fourth Street. Oh. So most of the lighting that you would have been seeing since December is really spotlights. The, the fixtures that were there don't really give off much. So the spotlights remain until the new um, fixtures come in. Okay, fantastic. So we move now to Mr. Freitz, who has been pretty quiet so far. And Skellig has a quite an interesting project coming on stream. Tell us more about that. Um, hi, good afternoon, all. Okay, we have what we termed um, power up. Basically, that is our um, top up feature for the meters. So we 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 are coming with um, a, another service which we call a power up. As the persons will now be able to top up their meters. So instead of getting your bill at the end of the month, you'll be able to pay for your usage before. And um, so if you pay $200, it's not like um, how the phone providers do it, whereby you pay and it ends like the end of the month or end of the week, whenever the case is. It ends when the money runs out. So that is something that we will be introducing soon. We are open to have it ready to be launched for the public by the beginning of next year. We will be um, releasing some information soon so persons can sign up. Persons who are interested to sign up for the, for the pilot program. So we will have that information going on. So we're just you know, touching up some stuff on the back end and making sure that it functions how it's supposed to. But we, that is, that is um, our new feature. And I'm um, joining with, with energy efficiency is that if what we realize and what we have seen from others who have been having um, the, the power up top of service is that because of the fact that you are now paying for the service before, um, persons have become more energy efficient because they actually be, you know, they're, they're realizing, okay, you pay $5, $10, whatever the case is, you realize it lasts X amount of days, so now you're more um, financially conscious 
which actually turn out to be more energy conscious of, of how much energy you use and how you how you how you spend your money. Because you want it to last as long as because possible. Because you want it to last as long as possible. I remember so, when you told me about this at first I was just floored. <laughs> yeah. And it sounded so alien to me and then you told me that there were other territories. Yeah, it's it's huge in Dominica. It. It's 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 huge in Dominica. Um um Jamaica just started it. They have about twenty thousand customers they put in and that's just a small population to them. That's just a small, small figure to them. But they are both there. Um, Barbados is looking at doing it. So it's something that's going throughout the island. Um, but we, we, we are hoping, we would most likely be the first one, other than, other than Dominica. We'll be like the first utility in the world to fully implement this when, when, we, when we launch it. So, <coughs> and how, how do you say, how did you say, um, people could access this because but, I think that was one mm, of the questions that we have. Is yeah. it something where you have to be able to top up when Skellic is open or no. are you going to set it up in a way that you can do it online or we, we, we Yeah, we set up in a way. We, we have a we have um, a app now. So you just integrate it into the app. And we are looking at it to be integrated into the app. The app would be basically locked to your account. So you could use your, when you log in, you go straight to your account or you uh, manually log in and you get your information. It'll be able to access via, uh, we are looking at vendors, those persons who do regular phone top ups, we are looking at those vendors. So we're working with a vendor. And we are also looking at um, doing it over the telephone where you're calling, you hear your bill balance, you make your payment, use your credit card or debit card. And also, if you're just coming to the store. Because heaven forbid my electricity runs out on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, can't, yeah, but you can't see, top up but you see a lot of these things we're putting into place. That is what we are looking at now. We are, we are looking at... Um, so you're saying I might be able to go down to the local shop yes, and buy and, $200 and worth of, of electricity? Yes, of credit. <laughs> So you'll be able to buy two hundred dollars worth credit. of credit. You'll be able to buy a hundred dollars worth. You can top up your electricity. Like yes, you top and you'll be phone. getting yes, and you'll be getting notifications. So it's not like you'll just lose your electricity. You'll be getting notifications. Like you'll tell us, okay, when it reach ten dollars, um, start to let me know. So and um, then how the system work is very, um, if you want to call it AI, artificial intelligence, is that it figures how much time you have less based on your usage so you will tell you okay you only have a day left or you only have two oh. days left or three days left and then every day you if you don't top up during that period it would send you a notification again to tell you you only have x, x amount of time left so you'll get notifications either via text or via the phone your phone would ring and it will tell you your balance or you will call in and listen so yeah it's 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 a pretty cool feature we don't have it we don't have to change the meters so it's the same meter. Well, once you have a smart meter anyway, it will be the same meter, so we don't have to change the meters. You'll just have to come in and you sign up and you say you want to switch from post-paid to prepaid. And that's it. You And, and we just do the switch that right there. That sounds so scientific though. Yeah, you just do the switch wow. right there and, and you'll just stop receiving a bill and you make your payment ahead of time and you know, it works. It works. And really and truly, we really got into this because we, we were trying to really get a lot of persons more financially and energy responsible yeah. because a lot of time persons were just going up the bill and then can't afford to pay for it. So if you if you know a paying for it ahead of time, then you you know you're better you'll be better at controlling how you use it. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm still floored. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm, we, we're gonna be. We, we, I'm tempted we have to a, sign up for the pilot project. I'm so tempted. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah we will be doing a fifty dollar credit for persons to sign up for the for, for the pilot project. So at least the first fifty persons will get like a fifty dollar credit. So you know that's another incentive for persons to sign up. And just to assure persons that you get regular electricity that's gonna power yeah. your entire house, yeah, 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 not yeah. like. Yeah. You're getting well, a certain amount no, of no. once the television is no, on, you can't no, charge your phone. No, 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 no. It's, it, it doesn't work like that. It's, it's very, it's, it's like, okay. And, and the thing about it, what I should mention too, is like, um, again, differing from the telephone companies, is that we don't have like a postpaid and a prepaid cost. Um, whatever the, 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 the electricity rate is, that's the electricity rate. And you just choose one. And you just choose one. So and you get electricity is, like any, any other yes, person. Yes, like any other person. We don't have a minimum as well, so persons could top up. If they want to top up a dollar, I mean, we don't encourage persons to top up a dollar. But if you want to top up two, five, five dollars, it's, it's free. fine. You go in and you top up the five dollars. But the thing is that 
when you come in and you sit with us, we'll we'll work it out and we'll say, okay, on average, you use X amount per day. So if you know you top up twenty dollars, that would last X amount of time. So oh. that, that way you'll always so know, you can get an idea before you get an idea of how much um, you should top up and how long it would last. Again, that would change based on your usage, but we'll be giving you the information based on the history of your usage. So you know you'll have an idea of how long it lasts. We're encouraging persons as well, persons who have like rental units and who went to like students and you know you have a lot of students come and go and in and out and that kind of stuff it'll work well for them because then it's no deposit so the person who went in a unit they don't have to come in and pay like four five hundred six hundred dollar deposit you just set once you sign up for um, um, power prepaid you don't have to pay a deposit so it works well for persons mm -hmm. If you're in a house that you're renting and you already paid a deposit and you want to switch, you get your deposit back. Well, in credit farm anyway. You'll just go back to your account in credit farms. So at least you'll have that money back. And you know what that eliminates? The, the entire issue of uh, outstanding bills Correct. when one tenant takes Leave over from and another yes, and then, they and then left the bill and from yes. before and you can't and get can connected connect because there's this outstanding bill. Yes. So it, it, it totally eliminates that because if you're leaving and you're leaving in like a few days and you say okay well twenty dollars can last me for the couple of days I'm leaving you leave it's done I mean the case is though is that even if you leave with a dollar so it's a dollar but at least you didn't leave with a hundred dollar bill or something like that you know so so that's why we're encouraging persons especially persons who are renting to do come in and and sign up and find out find out about it um, we'll be sending out a lot more um, educational information about it some facts some I can see those I can see persons kind of with apartments definitely taking that word yeah. to put all those units on. all 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 and we're encouraging them to really you know put it put all on and some mm -hmm. persons again who are who just got homes from the government and that kind of stuff you know come over like when you're ready just sign up for, for prepaid you know but hopefully also encourages people like you said to become more aware of their usage Correct. So, you know, we like to have several things on, on at the at same time, time yes. and we're not necessarily using any particular mm -hmm. one and we leave them going for hours and hours. Mm -hmm. And I know that Skellig has had some issues uh, in the past. I don't know if it's still ongoing with collection and like you said, people running up yeah. really large bills that they can't handle. That, that exists in every utility in the world. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, we have that issue, like, like most. Um, but yeah, um, <coughs> so that, that is what we're working on. Um, the power up so as i said it should be launched soon. well we we will be ready for december but we actually don't want to to launch during carnival christmas carnival time mm -hmm. so we're choosing to launch it um in january so but again we will send out and this, um, is this public the information pilot that. you want to launch no the pilot we're hoping to do um later this month maybe into oh, december okay. and then so the actual public, thing yes okay. in, in january Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll take a break. We've given people quite a lot to chew on. We're going to take a break and when we come back, we'll open up the phone lines to take your calls. And if you want to post your questions online, you can do that as well. Working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your St. Kitts Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of St. Kitts Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio with FM and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you. Welcome back to Working for You. My name is Jacqueline Bryan and I'm your host for today. We are joined by three special guests and they are Mr. Bertil Brown who is the director of the Energy Unit. Mr. Ron Body, who is the director of the Urban Development Unit, and Mr. Gavin Fritz, who is the public relations officer at Skellic, that's the St. Kitts Electricity Company. And today we are talking about CARICOM Energy Month, what's being done locally to commemorate the month, and clean energy projects that are taking place in St. Kitts and Nevis, as well as energy saving initiatives by both Skellic and the Urban Development Unit. And we spoke about several interesting very interesting projects and developments taking place here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Now, if you'd like to get in on the conversation, you can call the local number. That's 465-2555. That's 465-2555. 
or the international number which is 718-577-2916. That number again is 718-577-2916. Or like I said, if you're listening to the program where we have our live stream on Facebook, you can also post your questions there and I'll be sure to relate to our guests. Uh, so we were talking about clean energy, what it meant and why it's important. In your experiences, to what extent do you think the people who think it's a Nevis are really conscious and aware of energy and the effects of the kind of energy <coughs> we're using now? They're, they're aware of it, but uh, most of the inquiries can be benefit that they're most concerned about when they interact with me, the economic um, impact. They, they wanted to reduce their um, electricity bills. Um, I haven't had anybody come and say that they want to put in solar panels to reduce greenhouse gases or to reduce pollution. They want to reduce their electricity bill. And that's the perspective that they are mostly aware of it from. So to what extent do you think people are, uh, or rather, maybe the question should be, are you satisfied with the extent to which people are trying to get these alternatives? whether it's for economic reasons or for environmental reasons? Um, yes, there are a number of persons, there are, there are a number of rooftop solar, and I've seen even one wind, wind um, turbine, I think. So the um, population, they're adapting it, maybe not as fast as they should. Um, the main problem that I have with it, though, is that they just go and they put it on, they make the connection. What they should do, there's an application process. We are not stopping anybody from putting it on, but the application process is mainly for us to let Skelec know that you're connecting this piece of equipment to the grid and to make sure that um, it is done correctly. So we look at the drawing and if there's a problem with the drawing, with, how we, with the design, we point it out to you, you could go and fix it. And once you meet that criteria, then you could um, connect your equipment to the grid. So if anybody wants to implement anything in their homes to help them save electricity or to help them use cleaner energy, they should notify the energy unit. Once it is, is equipment that they are connecting to the Equipment in particular. Is it, uh, once it's equipment that they are collecting to, to the electricity grid. The, the reason is to make sure that this is done correctly. And how can they get in contact with the energy unit? Um, we're situated at the Ministry of public infrastructure, which is upstairs, the water department. Um, can't remember the number, the extension of the top of the head, but you know, it's in the telephone book. So they come there, they fill out the form, they speak with you and you'll advise them? Yes. So it's that simple? Yes. Now, what about bringing in the, the equipment? Is that simple as well? Uh, the government is looking at incentives. I don't think there are any particular incentives there at the moment. But that is something. What you that is something we talk when when you speak about the good government governance and the, the regulation. One of the things that the regulation would think probably um, tax tax um, reduction and so on, clean energy. I think those are things that would come into the good <coughs> governance part of it. So, what if persons have have any suggestions about ways in which energy could be better used in in the urban area, can they send those to you and have a discussion with you, Mr. Body? Of course, of course. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not energy savvy, just like you, but there are certain things I can help with. Um, and my office is right next door to the energy director, so <laughs> we, we, we can collaborate. If anybody has any questions, you can always come. Oh, so I guess if I come to your office and we need to go to his, we just walk a call. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> So what about but, what? No, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, um, I was just about to say there there are other ways though that um, we as public citizens can can save on energy. Um, there are some energy efficient tips that um, we can give or we can um, share with the public. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have heard in the past. One of the ways that you can save on energy is change a light bulb. Um, traditionally we have been using incandescent bulbs 
the traditional bugs that you know. Um, if we can change them out to um, <coughs> fluorescent, compact fluorescent, or better still, LED bulbs, that should have an impact on um, on your energy usage. Um, LED studies have shown that um, using LED LED bulbs can actually cut your lighting in half, cut your lighting bill in half, right? Um, other things people can do is um, switch off lights when you're out of the room. That's, it, it sounds simple, but it saves, it really does, right? Um, attach a, a sensor to the room if, if, if that's necessary, if you can remember to switch. When you leave the room, if the light come off. That, that in North America, that's a, a popular thing. Even in offices, um, there are sensors over your desk. So when you leave your desk, the light over you shuts off and that kind of stuff. So stuff like that we can we can um, encourage people to do. Um, go on. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, other, other, other areas we can um, help to save on energy. Uh, if we look at the home, look at our homes. Um, washing clothes. Right. Instead of making um, five small loads. The one big one, washing cold water, they are cold water detergents, um, you can wash, that saves on your heating, the water, hot water in, um, bill, and it saves water as well, right? Plus, it's not five loads, it's one load. Um, regular cleaning and maintenance of, of your equipment helps a lot as well. Um, Right now, everybody have flat screen TVs and stuff like that. If you don't wipe them, the screens, and keep them clean, when um, dust gather on the screen, it put it. It um, there's a lot more energy is needed to have that um, screen show because it's been it's the the dust on it cause it to heat up and it exerts a lot more energy. So stuff like that, just regular clean of your equipment, maintenance of your equipment, AC units and stuff like that, make sure they're regularly maintained and that can cut your energy bill as well. Okay. Fantastic. Those, those are ways that we can <coughs> do our own little part to And it saves save. you for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's if, if there's any utility bill, you usually ho hear people crying about is the electricity yeah, of course, yes. bill. So anything we can do, and un un you can unplug devices if you're not using them. My, I know my brother says that even if you leave um, a transformer plugged in and it's not being used, and it's still pulling energy. It pulls it's it's true. <coughs> so we but, definitely need um, to. Yes. One of the major things in terms of energy efficiency is. Um, the by equipment equipment that are being used like 24/7 for example your fridge the energy efficient equipment and they have an energy star on them they cost a bit more upfront but over their life they would save you um, on your energy costs so appliances appliances. Would, and you can find them in a variety like washing machines washing and machine, television refri just television refrigerators so people also need to be thinking about this when they are mm. going shopping for these things yes okay so if you need to ask a question to any of our panelists you can dial 465-2555 that's 465-2555 and the international number is 718-577-2916 that's 718-577-2916. Mr. Fritz, I don't know if, if Skellig actually has um, any initiatives where they try to encourage people to save energy. Is that a part of your... Um, we, we do share like some energy saving tips like what uh, Mr. Body had. We do share a lot of them. Actually, I um, had a presentation to do on Monday and I literally use um, the, the same tips that, that um, he, he has there. And we share them among um, um, a group of, of persons we, we, we met. So yeah, um, 
but we do tell persons, which is very important, um, really turn off the lights. Persons think that like the little thing of leaning on the lights is oh, it's okay because it's only a light, but you know it, it actually costs. And and the checking of your fridge and stuff like that, making sure that there's no air leaking through the fridge and that kind of stuff. So those little things, plugging out phone charger, laptop charger, not because it's not plugged into your laptop or your phone, it's still burning energy. You know, we tell persons about um, hooking, putting everything on one on a surge protector, so at least when you're leaving, you could just put, turn off the surge protector, everything is off. So those m little things, sometimes call them menu, but those little things um, do help um, when it comes to energy conservation. You know, that, that's, that's, that's serious because when you're leaving home, mm -hmm. especially for work, everybody's going to school, mm -hmm. you can unplug or turn off all the things that you're not going to be using while you're away because that's going to be pulling current yes. the entire day. The, the, the entire eight hours, uh, whatever, ten, you'll be out. You'll be pulling power that time, you know, so you're really... You really want yeah, we to tried that and we were very pleased with the results when the bill came. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, the little things, it is, it is really the little things um, mm -hmm. that, that do count. So we ask persons to just practice these, these kind of stuff, <coughs> you know, practice that, that kind of thing. Because we, you know, I may not be in customer service, but I, I do get a lot of the, the complaints I do be around whereby I would hear persons, you know, complain about their bill and then, you know, we check and we ask questions and then we realize it's you know their practices whereby and you know so some persons think that oh let me take off my fridge when i'm not home and then they go back home and they put it on not a really smart choice because all the fridge have to build back up to the to the temperature so that means they have to the motor have to be running but the, you know, the surely motor. there are certain things that you just shouldn't unplug yeah you know we said you know for sure leave the fridge you know but the other set of stuff yeah <laughs> well, but one of on the CARICOM Energy Month website, mm -hmm. one of the things they spoke about was the issue of behavior change, mm -hmm. getting people to do things differently. Oh, we have a call. Oh, we have a call. Good afternoon. You're live. I'm working for you. Good afternoon, Jackie. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. You sound good, and you um you host you you guest them there on your your panel. Good afternoon, all you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, get all your pen for some questions I'm gonna ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I heard one of the, the guests here was talking about um energy, you know, diver um removing from this uh what you call it the fossil anyway. Field. Anyway, trying to to to, field, huh? to use less less uh what you call it less problem. That would, would that would I mean less device that would create a lot of problem. In other words, you say that they're gonna move to electrical school bus operation. The bus would be operated from batteries. No, question going to number be a, one. It's going to be a pilot project, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would ask him. Now, how? What is the lifespan of one of those batteries? And can the batteries be recharged? And if they are more, when you add it up, if they are more costly than using the diesel in the engine of the vehicle, which one you think is more, would be more economical for the environment? So I, I, I would listen up here. Okay, thank you so much. All right, yes, thanks. Okay, um, thanks for the question. The, the life of the electric vehicle them um, about the same and maybe even longer than the life of the gasoline or diesel vehicles that we have at the at the moment the the um, in terms of being able to recharge yes the batteries are rechargeable you um, you, you charge them you run them for, for a while, and when they get low on charge, you could plug them up again to a charging station. They recharge, and you run them again. You could charge them overnight, um, so that in the morning, they're, they're ready to go. In terms of the cost, at the moment, the these vehicles cost more than the conventional vehicles, the gasoline and the diesel vehicles. But over their lifetime, they the lifetime cost is much less because the, the maintenance cost 
is much less than the than the um, the diesel cost. The electricity cost would be cheaper than the than the um, gasoline uh, diesel. The maintenance cost because they have much less moving parts. The maintenance cost is much less, uh, and in fact, you have to maintain what you do. For example, if you have a car and you maintain it once every routine maintenance once every three months, an electric vehicle the maintenance period is more like once every six months, uh, maybe even a year, and it would cost less to maintain it when you when you do maintain it. So the lifespan cost is much less than um, the than a diesel vehicle at the moment. But yeah. the problem is the upfront cost. I think one of the, the components of this project as well is, is solar power charging station. Yes. The, so, yes. so we're actually not using off the grid to charge the batteries. Oh, that's, that's well, important. Um, well, some of it, uh, we, we won't have um, a solar facility large enough to provide all of the electricity that the vehicle needs. But a portion of the electricity that the bus will need would be generated from solar power. That's interesting. So yes. you, you try to make it as self-sustainable as possible? Yes. Okay, I hope that answers all the questions for the caller. Remember, if you have a um, question, any question at all related to anything we've spoken about or energy in, in general, you can call 465 2555 or you can post your question on Facebook. Right. Um, let me add one other thing. The battery over its life to when it get um, it can no longer service the car that battery could be used, could be put to other use. It still has a life after the, its life in the, in the car, in the vehicle. So it can then be used <coughs> maybe to power a light somewhere. Do you know what the what did you say the average lifespan of, of such batteries are? They're comparable with the lifespan of the present they care. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay, because sometimes I wonder if a rechargeable battery, like well, I don't know what the, the term is, but we say run down faster, runs down faster than a a, a, a actual Regular vehicle. Battery. So if it because you have to keep recharging it if it over if it lose its effectiveness faster than the average um, gasoline powered car. Well, the, the, each time you, you run it down and recharge it, the battery degrades. But it still... That's the word, degrade. Yeah, but it still would be effective mm -hmm. for about the life of... Uh, comparable to the life of a um, vehicle, a normal vehicle. Okay. And I guess once it gets here, we'll be able to know how far it can go once it's fully charged, etc. And will you have charging stations around the island? Well, there's a consultancy to look into that as to where the charging station is going to be. But most likely there will be one charging station because they have a, a fairly wide range. We think that um, a school bus could do all it runs, a whole day run on a battery and has something left. Oh, I'm not sure. So, I don't so know. You have to tell me. Yeah? So, <laughs> yes. So, if you have one charging station, it leaves a charging station in the morning and it has enough charge to do all it runs for that day and oh, okay. come back to that station oh, okay, at okay. the end of the day. Oh, that's a very long time. Yes. For, for some reason, um, when I think electric fact, battery, I'm not, I'm not thinking it can go it, for that long. In fact, one of the one that we reviewed is a school bus <coughs> in Trinidad that is used to take students between the campuses for the University of Trinidad and Tobago. And it has a range of 300 kilometers between charges. Um, nowhere on the island is 300 kilometers. <laughs> on Sink, it's 300 kilometers. Okay, fantastic. Well, that's that's definitely going to be mm -hmm. an interesting pilot project. Can't wait to see those school buses on the road. But before yes. the call, we were talking about behavior change, and I was saying that on the Caricom Energy. We have another call. Oh, we have another call. Let's take all the calls we can take. Welcome to Working For You, you're live. My name is Sidney Lybird. I live right there to the north of the fire station up here. Yes. And uh, every month, I have to go up to the electricity department to ask for my bill. Up to last month, uh, 26, I went and asked and I paid. That's number one. Number two, 
When the fella come, come through with the meter, I asked him about the meter card. And I don't know why he's, he's telling me. So I, I listen off the, off the ear and see what's going on. Okay, well, thank oh. you so much. Okay. Well, it's not necessarily related to <laughs> the, the conversation, but... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we know we would have um, some customers calling cars. One skeleton can see you. Yeah, we will get yes, those cars. Yes. We'll get the cars. Um, let me see if I can address first because it's, I don't understand, um, I guess he's saying that he don't usually get his bills. So that's when well, I took the name and I got the address. So I think we could look into the area, I mean, to his, into his account. And um, the, I, can't, I can't answer the question why he might not be getting a bill because honestly, I, I won't be able to know. And as for the meter card, um, yeah, what happened is we don't have, okay, have another we have car. another car. Okay, well, okay. be sure to make a note of that. Welcome to Working For You, you're live. Yeah. Miss Brown? Hi. Yeah, I'm back again. Okay. I hope my question is not too advanced for the knowledge of the guys in there. No, no, no. I, I, it might be too advanced for me, but <laughs> I, I know one of them will be able to answer. No, I want, <laughs> I want to draw an illustration to them. Now, suppose we do not have any sunlight, the sun does not shine his face below the, cro the cloud for two weeks. So the sun would not be able to charge the, the solar charger for, for charging up the batteries for the bus. What will happen to those batteries? Because 1984, we have had rain in Sinkit here for two weeks non stop. Non stop, but it was what you call soaking rain. I remember across the body fire station, fellows from a punch pasture were coming down on the road there in boat. That the amount of water we had here, so the sun really never come out to say, well, then the sun is, I feel the sun burning me or nothing. So how would those batteries there um, be charged if they got to depend on the solar power? Okay. Yeah. All right. right. Just that, if you can just offer some clarification, maybe he missed some of what you were saying before. Yes, they will be charged by a combination of um, solar plus um, the grid, electricity from the grid. So if a number of days we do not have any um, solar energy, the grid, they would get their charge from the electricity grid. So I hope that answers his question. So if... They're not solely dependent not sol on solar. Yeah. Yeah. And if yes. at any point in time the solar energy isn't available, they just get yeah. charged Charge from, from the grid. Yeah. Okay, we have another call. Fantastic. Welcome to Working For You, you're live. Good afternoon, Jackie. Hi, good afternoon. And good afternoon to you guys in the FM Skelet. Mm -hmm. Now, just my little question here to you, to you all. Sure. You're not talking about, like, tap up. You got me in a tap up. That is something where you are doing on stream? Yes, yes. Correct. So, that, that will go to everybody? Uh, if you want tap up, you, 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 no. you that will go to every household? No, 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 choice. It's your choice. If you want, if you don't oh. want it, you don't have to take it. It's just choice. Oh, just, just, just like our flow that it tap up. Correct. And some people are prepared and post paid. Post paid, that's correct. It's, it's, some, it's something like that? Yeah. So if you don't want right. it, it's not something you don't, you must take. But it's but just... I, I, I hear Carla calling in something about some kind of thing which, 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 which damage us. Something will damage us. I don't know because of what you are doing now. But you said something dangerous? Ah. Like, some, some on this, on this program? It was a similar program what we had with, with uh, talking about um, smart meters. No, we don't use those kind of meters. So I, oh, okay, I okay, because you're saying that some kind of poison then they got to cook your tanks and your yeah, we don't, and we don't, we don't use those type of meters here. We never had them okay. installed, so we don't have those type of meters. Okay, we, we, want, to thank, we want to thank you all to update us and, 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 and select on what you are doing with your plans and your program, right? Y'all okay. have a wonderful day, God bless. Okay, All right, you. you have a wonderful day as well. We have another call, hold on. Welcome to Working For You, you're live. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I heard a bit of a program, so I'm trying to get Y'all talking about solar energy? Yes, we're talking about clean energy alternatives and ways in which we can save energy. So even if you miss some of the program, you ask your question, our panel is willing to help. Okay then, Jackie. All right, my name is Frank Garden. I have a few questions here. Okay. Because... I have a large row and I keep inquiring about solar panels. What would be the buyback rate if we put in solar panels and then we, we send out more 
and we consume. But I keep getting one around in cigarettes, and send it to one person, the other person. What would be the buy that we waste? So make sure that it's feasible. Okay. What? Yeah, that's, that's one question. That's one. Uh, I heard y'all well, was thinking about an electric school bus. Yes. Well, that's a good idea. Because I follow the, the technology closely. You got the Nissan and these and the Tesla the world stuff. If you guys bring down the cost of electric consumption with the solar panels, which I think y'all need more solar farms, then you can revolutionize thinking. Because in a tree by the diameter, majority of the population live from Fugibet to West Ham and then St. Peter's. So it's more food for talk. I think we need a lot more solar farms. Okay. I don't thank you, but if you get, get, get the answer to the question, the payback with it. Definitely, I have it noted, Mr. Gordon. Oh, okay then. All right, take care. Okay. Thank you so much for your question, caller. So, um, he's saying, great idea to the electric school bus project, but he wants to know about the buyback rate. Can I, let's, let me answer the guy, um, yes, the letter first. before we go back. Yes, please. Um, his issue was with the meters. Um, well, meter reader, not reading. There's some about we we don't read about 80 percent of meters anymore we just they, they literally we don't the meter readers don't have to go but the meter reads themselves um his issue is that long time ago we used to have a card that persons used to yeah. the meter user used to fill in i remember so the persons could back check um the issue might be that maybe we don't have cards anymore but what i'll do i'll follow up and and i'll see if that's something that we could solve i'll, I'll see if we could get him a card and but if the meter reader, if the meter readers is because usually what they do is spot checks, that's literal reason more. So if they're not doing a read, then he won't really get a card. That's that's the problem. So they won't have a card to read. But I, we we understand the angst of it because if a person's are custom of it, uh, customs are to it. So um, I I will look into the whole meter card thing and see if we could maybe yeah, Mark, the the number would be on the bill though. Um, yeah. When it was read. This when it was read. This is what, this it, what was. it was. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of persons i i don't know if it was prior to to Skellig and whatever it was but they we had they, there was a meter card so when the meter readers yeah, come he'll just the follow yeah they, they used to be all different colors yeah, yeah. and he used to stick it in the meter yeah and just stick it in the meter yeah so um but we don't use those anymore but i i we we do have some some persons <coughs> who have asked about like, especially the elderly who have asked about us and and having do, those things back um can I make a decision on it so i'll find out but um, I was going to say, I don't know if that's the case. I don't uh -huh. know if it's that he's not very mobile or maybe going mm -hmm. up to Skellig is difficult. Mm -hmm. But if somebody can get in contact with him and have that conversation with him yeah. and help him to understand what the process is now, maybe he isn't yeah. uh, maybe aware of the changes yeah. that Skellig has made and he's still looking for somebody to, to actually come, come, come and check. Because what and they, I know what, yeah, so when, <laughs> when you're filling yours, you're filling mine, you know, yeah, and I'll yeah, make yeah. sure that you're building before what you yes, should be building exactly, before. because that is what they do a lot. So when the bill come out and the bill said the 15th, it was 73 or 8, you look back for the 15th and you make sure it match up to say 73 or 8, you know, so that is, that's why it was, it was done. And right. sometimes we make changes and not everybody is completely Correct. on board. So Correct. it's just to reach out to the person and I'm happy that he is able to listen to the program and call and mm -hmm. we can get him some assistance yeah, so that he he's better aware of what's happening with his bill and his card okay so mm -hmm. hopefully Gawain Fritz is on the case and you'll be hearing from someone from Skellig soon so on to the next one buyback rate when he says buyback rate firstly could we explain what that is okay um, when you generate uh, um, solar energy if you generate more than your premises, your house need, the excess goes into the grid. Um, what he's asking is how much Skellig would buy that excess for. And what he has done, I wish to thank him because what he has done, he has highlighted something in the theme, in the CARICOM theme, which is good governance and regulation. Because what they're pushing is for these policies to be clear to the consumer and to investors and so on. Because that isn't clear, he has a problem now with it. So what we have done, we have written procedures as to how to go about getting your thing. But what we haven't done, we haven't put a rate to it yet. So there's no rate at the yeah, moment? There's no rate at the moment. But there are basically three methods that they use. One is that whatever you send back to the grid, 
it basically spin your meter backwards so you're base in effect you're selling it back to the electricity company at the same rate at which they are selling you you don't have to pass any money you would see the difference in your bill automatically there's a um, yes the, so the, is it possible to have a negative bill that's what you're yes. saying yes okay. if, if that's the, the the framework that is used there, there's another one where um, your excess what you use um, don't go to the to the utility but the excess that you sell back the utility set a price at which you would um, they would um, sell they would buy it and then there may be exchange of money there may not be you would just be a credit on your account thing and then there's another one which is mainly used for these large sort of um, what they call a feeding tariff where everything you produce you sell to the utility um, now what what happened you 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 can't just get up and implement a price and a method just like that you have to get a consultant and do the study to find out which method is the best which is fair to both the utility and to the consumer and we haven't done that as yet so as it stands now there being no buyback rate no yes. set buyback rate is mm -hmm. it that if someone is producing energy in excess they're not they don't get anything for it they don't get anything for it okay so i hope that's clear to the caller until yes. something is put in place so why then would someone get a bill if they're not using energy from Skellig at all if they're not no that's not the case that's no that's not, no they're using energy from Skellig it's just that maybe because they have the the panel there they're um less than they, they would normally oh, have so they would have to end up they might be using mm -hmm. their panels because it's sunlight yes but in the night, in the night oh, because a household wouldn't have the capacity to store energy. That's what you're most, saying. Most of them wouldn't have the capacity. Yeah. Oh, okay, I understand now. Thank you so much <laughs> for clearing that up for me. Okay, so I hope that answers the question of the caller. Um, so he he better understands. And is this something we can see coming on stream in the near future if we're encouraging <coughs> more people to to embark in these things for themselves and clean energy initiatives? And yes, if you want to encourage clean initiative as I say you must have transparent procedures and guidelines the laws must be there so that everybody is aware of them if when you decide to put put on solar panel you know already how you will be paid and so forth so it's something we have to do since we are encouraging clean energy okay so we're looking for that sh shortly yes the policies in okay fantastic thank you so much um, he also said that he thinks that we need to have more solar farms but I know the argument against that has been that solar farms take up a lot of land space and you can't necessarily use it for much else although I think there are some there are some projects where they're looking into having the panels almost on a level high above the ground so you can use the ground underneath them. What do you say to that? Well, we do need more clean energy. That's what we are we are um, encouraging. Um, apart from the solar farm, more people could put panels on their rooftop. And the government, has, in terms of solar farm, the government is presently in negotiation with a number of developers who are, who are willing to put, build solar farms. And but given our limited land space, how mm -hmm. lucrative or how feasible is that, do you think? Um, it's, it's feasible. We have lands that um, the alternative alternative use and not as good as solar oh i see mm -hmm. okay so probably lands that you you can't you not necessarily for building or farming they can allocate them to yes. okay all right well we're almost out of time uh, we wrap up at three and we don't have any additional calls so i think we were speaking about behavior change i was trying to get from skellic in particular if they can yeah. say uh, if they I know they've had a lot of initiatives. They can mm -hmm. say that they. If, do you see behavior change as a big issue, um, or do you think we've made some progress? We, we, we still have a way to go. I'm got to be honest about it. We still have a way to go. Um, persons, we, 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 we do see um, when you look at the, the trend um, for electricity usage. Um, we realize that. Okay, as as Vaughn point, pointed out, we we would have like a peak of twenty six. 
but say the average during the day is 24, right? The day. And, and then in the night, we'll have an average of another 24, which means that now we have more persons running AC in the night than before, because that would be the only reason why you, you would have that. So what we're realizing now is that we, we do have a high peak in the day and a high peak in the night. And, and that's not something that that's were usual before. So we have a lot of persons who use AC and you really can't, um, you know, we, we can't not for that because if you want to use AC, you want to use AC. But there, there are ways that you can use it a lot more efficiently. Like if you're going to have your AC one in, don't, you know, have, make sure the doors, um, you have stuff on the door to so keep the, the air from going under the door. Uh, make sure you, you just put it on when you need it and you don't have it running in the room for any excessive period of time. And set, you have it set, set, a set a temperature. Like a lot of times we come in, we change the temp. Is that what, 17 bar? We have that 17 degrees. Mm -hmm. Then we come in again, we change it again to 80, we bring it down to 16. All those things mm -hmm. cause the motor to come in, cut out, cut in, cut out. So that now keeps your, the motor running, which means that keeps your, 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 yeah. your, you keep using energy because you keep the meter spinning. And that's, so, that's a very mm -hmm. important point. Um, mm -hmm. set, set a temperature. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you're going to, to businesses and everybody in there in a sweater. Which means they're at an uncomfortable so, temperature. Yeah. Why not just crack up the temperature yeah, right, so it, that uh, you can be comfortable? Yeah, you, you set, set, set a, a comfortable temperature mm -hmm. and leave it at that. Like. Even now, okay, like all the place is cool. Mm -hmm. And I left it like downtown. It was it was freezing, so we realized we had to change temperature because it, the building was literally cold. You know, and you see that a lot as, as things. So you go in places, you see like everybody, you know, everybody you go some of the banks and that's the problem. So you set the temperature. If it's, it's going to be 74 in the places, it's cool. Also, you know, you bring it up a little bit. So at least it's a comfortable temperature. And it means, again, the motor will run less. You know, the, the condensing unit outside will run less. So you're less going in less energy. So it's all these things is, you know, those little simple things cause us to, to burn less energy. Unplug your cable box or your Android box, whatever you have, whatever you use, you know. When you're in home because it all makes sense have it on you're not home to look at it uh you're not you know you're not home using it you know those little things um add up and it could actually lower your electricity bill you know one of the things that um i found very useful i i, I presently live in a house that was built maybe in the late 70s and back then mm -hmm. um it was just 220 they ran just 220 through the house mm -hmm. So in every room, I had a transformer mm. because everything now works one day. <laughs> and one day, an electrician came and told me, um, you know what? I could get rid of them transformer and give you one, you know. And tell and he he tell me he'll explain to me why. Mm -hmm. He went in every room and calculated the wattage on every one of them. I think mm -hmm. he came up to about twelve thousand watts. <laughs> so on a daily basis, I have to power up. 12,000 watts mm -hmm. and each well all the yeah. transformers in the different rooms and he said all I need is 5,000 so he eliminated all the, the small transformer yeah. put one big 5,000 so imagine that that's yeah. 7,000 watts less yeah right and it made a kind of a significant difference on my bill, trust me. And you look yeah. like you had a yeah. flashback on your bill oh, yeah. just now As in your mind. <laughs> and it wasn't hard to do. Oh, we have another mm -hmm. call? Okay. This might be our final caller for today. Welcome to Working For You, you're live. Hey, Jackie. Yes, sir. I will need you to defend me when you're done. <laughs> no. Well, it depends on what you're going to say. Yeah, hear this. Fools ask questions to be made wise. Well, I am... I am, um, what you call, an inquisitive fool. Now suppose Jacqueline cover her, her, her whole house roof with solar panel. And Jack, let's say Jacqueline got a big house and the whole roof cover with that. The Jacqueline still has to depend on Skellig to, to supply current. Can't those, all those panels on Jacqueline roof supply enough electricity to Jacqueline during the day and the whole night? Jacqueline, defend me while I listen to you. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll make sure they answer your question. I don't think that's necessarily anything to defend, but it's something that we spoke about just now. Okay, but if you can storage. explain it so one it's, more time. It's a good question. It's not a yes or no answer question. Mm -hmm. It depends. Um, for one, depend on the type of system that she has. Some of those systems, they must be connected to the grid in order to, to operate. So... If she can't disconnect from the grid, even though she has her solar, 
So, so she still needs the grid. In order to disconnect from the grid, if you have a system that disconnects from the grid, then you have to have a significant amount of battery storage, storage. which carries up your car significantly and may not be as um, economic as being connected to the grid. So, so unless you have mm -hmm. the capacity to store the energy store we've the gotten energy. in the night, right. Right. Yeah. because the day, we understand yes. that solar panels don't work in the yeah, night, yes. then it doesn't make any sense to disconnect from to, the to grid. Disconnect from the grid. Okay, so I hope that answers the question of the caller. So yes, mm -hmm. disconnecting from the grid is a possibility, a possibility so that you don't need to have anything to do with Skellic anymore, but you need to have that storage capacity. capacity so that you can have energy provided in the evening time when your solar panel would not be getting energy from the sun. Yes. All right. So it's about that time where we have to wrap up, gentlemen. I thought we had a really good discussion today. I learned a lot, certainly. So hopefully our callers were able to, to get a lot from the conversation. So I guess we can start with uh, Mr. Fritz, who went last, then go to Mr. Body and end with Mr. Brown. Uh, your final thoughts and what would you like callers to remember uh, the most? Um, Our listeners to remember? Um, well, mainly if... Well, <laughs> this way so funny. Yeah, remember to pay Skellic at the end of the month. <laughs> 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 you know, you're keeping us at least we could keep the power on. And But seriously though, we could be... Um, this is Energy Month and there's a lot of things that we can do to, to conserve energy um, as, as individuals, as companies, you know, we could do a lot of things to conserve energy, just the little things of unplugging um, appliances, turn off lights, um, month, have your AC set properly, even your, your water heater set properly and stuff like that on, on proper temperatures. So at least they don't, they don't use excessive or use all the amount um, that they're supposed to use and um, use uh, monitor what you use, which is very important. And again, if you have any issues, just call us at Skellic, you know, 465 2000. Give us a call and we'll be happy to help. Um, I'm letting Mr. Leibon know that I'm going to look into his situation as well. And we also have um, just a little plug in for our IVR. We'll be having um, so persons will now be able to call in soon, be able to call in, hear their bill on, over the phone, make payment over the phone. That's just something new that we are adding. So, um, yeah, but for, the, for this month, um, let us all try to conserve energy a bit and um, <coughs> just let's practice it now and then we'll see. And then when we get the our November bill, technical well, our December bill in December, um, we'll be able to compare it to the November bill and see if it made a difference. Fantastic. Mr. Wadi? Yes, um, in wrapping up, I just want to remind people uh, about the, the bulb drives that. Um, we will be putting on on the 16th of November at um, Water Department parking lot. Um, energy unit and Skelet will be in attendance to answer any question to maybe give some info, other information on power up and other initiatives. So that's on the 16th. And on the 30th, there's another bulb drive at Skelet. Um, just come on out and get yourself some free bulbs. I um, also want to push again the, the health walk, the, the public is invited to join us um, on the 24th of November, it start at Skellic at 6, come on up and $20 for breakfast. <laughs> Mr. Brown? Uh, okay, the purpose of the Energy Month is to <coughs> get the public aware of the issues surrounding um, energy. Um, during this month, we are doing that we have this um, radio discussion we will be having the barb drive go come and ask questions and so forth but it's incumbent on you the individual to um, keep educating yourself and keep abreast of our matters relating to energy the ministry of energy is there to help you you are always welcome to contact us come in and ask any question relating to um to, to energy and i would encourage you to do your part in terms of um getting clean energy whether it's a solar panel or what and if you can't afford a solar panel then the energy efficiency measures they are much easier and cheaper to implement like turning off your lights when you leave your your room and so forth 
Fantastic. Well, I want to thank all of you for choosing Working For You to share this information with our audience. I really appreciated the discussion and I appreciate the direction that the ministry is trying to move in with a lot of these projects that they're having. And I think the energy saving tips were quite useful, especially about the air conditioning units, which a lot of people are now getting. So thank you all so much. I want to thank our listeners and I want to thank the callers for making today's show what it was. My name is Jacqueline Bryan and I was your host for today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your St. Kitts Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of St. Kitts Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you.